This is the Flipping Failure Podcast with Clint Bartlett, hosted by Clint Bartlett, Jeff Cohn, special VIP guest, David Dodge, coming from us from St. <laughs> Louis. Super excited, you guys, to kick this off today. Uh, team building podcast focused on interviewing team leaders, broker owners, and thought leaders from across the country. Excited to be partnering today with the Flipping Failure Podcast, which is all about investing. And then, of course, the Team Building Podcast, which is all about building and scaling a dominant real estate team in your marketplace. David Dodge, welcome to our podcast today. Sir. Guys, thanks for having me. I fit in so well because I am so good at failing. That's literally <laughs> all I do that's all why day. we brought you in. I fail forward, but that's how you get successful, right? You got to take those risks, got to learn how to fail. And, and uh, you know, obviously the goal would be to avoid failing, but uh, it's inevitable. It really is. You know, it's really funny. Um, everyone on social always wants to post all their successes. And I know I've talked about this in the past, but it's kind of fun to post your failures. And Clint and I have both had experiences in the last 12 months where we've fallen on dry ice. Clint did it in my driveway. I did it on my hot tub deck. But instead of just laughing at ourselves, we went to my security cameras, which <laughs> captured these moments. If you want to see him, go out to my Facebook page, Jeff M. Cohn. Um, but it's fun to admit when we fail. And so often people want to get on and brag. So I would love, David, for you to just introduce yourself quickly to our audience, let them know why they should listen to the next 15 to 20 minute podcast. And then I want everyone to know we're not going to talk about why we're awesome today. We want to talk about why we chose to take steps backwards and fail so that we could discover where our greatness was at. And David has certainly done that in his business. Hell yeah. I, again, thanks for having me, guys. I'm grateful to be here. Um, so I'm David Dodge out of St. Louis, Missouri. I've been investing for about 16 years. I've been doing it full time for six uh, my business is primarily um, marketing driven. We do a lot of wholesaling. We do some fix and flip at any given time. We usually have anywhere from four to eight fix and flips going. Um, but the goal for us, our primary focus, our passion is passive income. It's rental investing. It's, it's landlording. And the marketing is really the coolest thing because it opens up the doors, right? I tell this to a lot of my students, guys, that you know, if you don't want to be a wholesaler, that's fine. And you just want to be a fix and flipper or you just want to be a landlord, that's fine. But you still need to learn the marketing aspect of this business because once you get a good deal, all those doors open. You know, If you want to go be a landlord, the doors open. If you want to be a fix and flipper, the doors open. If you want to wholesale, that door is open. But if you're not able to get a good deal on a property, by direct to seller marketing. That's typically how that happens. You know, none of those doors will be open to you. So six years full time as an investor. Um, this year, what is today, like middle of March, mm -hmm. uh, we've already bought and sold over 100 houses. So we're having a really phenomenal year. Typically, we'll do about 100 a year on average over the last, um, you know, four or five years. And I'm just very, very passionate about all things real estate investing. So guys, thanks for having me. Absolutely. You've already done over a hundred deals in the first can we, quarter. Can we talk yeah. about that? Let's back that up. Yeah. <laughs> Was this part partially you offloading yeah. some of your portfolio? Um, some very, you know, probably 20 or 30, give or take. Uh, but this year I actually took home a monster deal. So, you know, one of my buddies is an agent back in St. Louis where we live and he focuses primarily on uh, commercial multifamily. And there was a university that was closing down one of their campuses. And that university had a portfolio of about 115 properties. It was 51 single family properties, a 30 unit building, a 10 unit building, and then a bunch of various you know duplexes and quads and all that. And he called me up and he said, Dave, he says, I know you're constantly marketing, marketing on social media and all over that you buy houses. He goes, you're phenomenal at keeping, or at, you know, and making sure that your business isn't a secret. You're always talking about it. And I always preach that, you know, don't keep your business a secret. Let everybody know. And long story short, he called me and said, I know you're typically buying about a hundred houses a year. What's stopping you from buying a hundred of them in one transaction? And I said, you know, there's really nothing stopping me. It's just those opportunities don't present themselves that often to, to me. And he said, well, guess what? I got one for you. And uh, we were able to wholesale this entire package. So we bought it for four and a half million. We sold it for about 
The gross profit on it was about four hundred and eighty thousand. We had a lot of partners. We had closing costs. You know, a lot of, a lot of everyone had to get paid, of course, uh, but we were able to walk away with about a three hundred and ten thousand dollar net profit. Wow! My so that's goodness. kind of what catapulted us into you know having a lot of success this year. You know, usually we're about a hundred houses a year. I would imagine this year we'll be closer to two. So that's a unicorn deal. It is. You ever have one that big before? No, that was our first Did, uh, deal that big. Of congratulations, course. by the way. That's amazing. I'm a little bit jealous and happy for you at the same time. <laughs> oh, of course. You should be. <laughs> I, I have a question quick. Did your marketing build that relationship with the person that brought you that deal or did them being cognizant of the fact that you were doing marketing made him or her want to reach out to you? To so the, you that that's a great question and it's both. Okay. I never really marketed to him, but marketing is marketing and him seeing me, so him being cognizant of the marketing that I was doing, you know, let him know not only that I was interested in those type of deals, but that I had been doing it for about six years. At that point, it was about five, five and a half years. And he knew I wasn't going away. So yeah, I mean, it's marketing is the name of the game when it comes to investing. It, it truly is. The, you know, the, the greatest part about the world that we're in and in most things in life, um, the longer you're in the game, the more chances are you're going to hit a, a home run. That's right. Um, so you're taking swings, you're, you're hitting singles, hitting doubles, some triples, but the home runs come because of longevity. You're yeah. still in the game. You're still playing. You're still putting yourself out there. And those uh, events present themselves. And I, I, I love the, that because I never thing. swing for the fences. Yeah. I mean, singles win games. You're a bunter. I'm a bunter. I mean, I <laughs> truly am. Sacrifice a bunter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd love to, you know, singles are what we, that's what, that's the bread and butter. Yeah. That's what we look for every single day. I'm not one to believe really in luck. I don't really believe in luck, but I know that the the harder I work, the luckier I get, right? It just kind of happens that way. And, you know, this deal has really opened up my eyes now because A, I've proven to myself that I'm capable of doing these type of deals, but B, it really wasn't that much more complicated than just doing a single individual single family home. Yeah. I say a lot on our podcast, it's the small and simple things consistently over long periods of time that create greatness, that define greatness in a person. Um, and it's just the willingness to endure. And so obviously we created this uh, white unicorn experience that you've had and Clint and I have a share of my own, our own, I should say. But today we want to talk about failing. So flipping failure, um, would love to go back prior to this transaction that just took place this year. Let's do it. And maybe share two or three of your greatest failures. Okay. So I can sum this up pretty quick. So I hope you guys aren't looking for a big, long explanation. So I've done about, ooh, if I were to guess, 650 to 700 purchases of real estate over the last you know six, seven years. And I've only lost money three times out of about 650 transactions. And every one of those three losses were because I overpaid when I bought. So I try to tell this to everybody that I possibly can, and this is a great opportunity for me to tell everybody that's listening and watching, you make your money when you buy. You get paid when you sell. And I know we've all heard this, and it's just one of these like, you know, I don't know if cliche is the right word or not, but it's just like one of these things that, you know, everyone just kind of knows, but it rings so incredibly true, guys. You make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. So the best and easiest way to prevent a failure whenever you are buying a property as an investment is to just make sure that you are buying it right, right? You got to go in low. That's where the money's made. I like it. And it's, it's that like, simple. I'm using another sports analogy, um, drive for show, putt for dough. I think about the selling process. It's for show. It's the fun part. Hey, look at this big deal I just did. Look at this big closing. Look at this big net amount. But why did that happen? Why were we able to generate that much value um, in our net number? And it's all about the putting game. And that's where it takes the time mm. and the sophistication to take your business to the next level. You talked about some marketing strategies that you guys are deploying right now. I know Clinton, I got to come out and visit you a couple of years ago in St. Louis mm -hmm. and you kind of unveiled everything to us. Just for the listeners today that haven't started in investing, or maybe they own a couple doors, where would you recommend that they invest? And I know we have two podcast audiences here, one that does dedicate themselves to investing, the other that are 
primarily team leaders or broker owners. Mm -hmm. um, from a marketing standpoint, when you are that hybrid agent working both investors and with agents, you have a little bit of a unique opportunity in that you can wear a traditional realtor hat and go into the appointment with the opportunity to list traditional to help them maximize profitability or buy wholesale or hotel or flip or hold. There's so many options there. And I know with all your marketing efforts, one could list traditionally with that strategy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the top uh, strategies you guys are deploying right now in St. Louis? Yeah, so number one, I said it earlier, I'm gonna say it again though. Don't keep your business a secret, guys. Let every single person that you are, is in your sphere, your friends, your family, even the acquaintances that you're so-called friends with on social media, right? But you don't know them. Let every single person know your business. And if that business is being an agent, then tell them that. And if that business is like my business where it's like, I want to buy properties and I'm an investor, then tell those people. So I'd say first and foremost, guys, just start there. Don't keep your business a secret. Let the world know that that's the business you're in. Beyond that, it's really a marketing business, right? Like, so even as an investor, you know, my, and the, the way I look at it and the way I define it is you don't really become an investor until you start taking risk. Um, so it all starts with the marketing. So what do we do, guys? We do a lot of things, uh, but none of these things are rocket science. It's so incredibly simple. So uh, we do a lot of cold calling and cold texting. We do a lot of direct mail. We do bandit signs. We do online advertising like uh, Facebook ads or Google ads or you know things like that. Uh, we do a lot of networking, which means we'll go to real estate clubs or meetups and we'll meet the other players and we'll we don't try to work joint ventures with them. Um, and then uh, we do a little bit of radio advertisement as well. That's basically about 80%. Now there's about 50 other things that we do, right? But when, but when we're talking, you know, 80% 80, 80, 80 rule here, right? It really just comes down to those basic things. So direct mail, cold calling, cold texting, you know, some banded signs and um, networking. I cannot stress enough the importance of networking mm. guys. Very important. I'm so with you on that. You know, we have seen um, some of our biggest gains over the last couple of years by growing our sphere and just becoming best friends with every wholesaler, every investor, even some of my top competitors in our market. Um, I'm buying houses from them. You, you will, we'll literally go head to head on appointments and they'll win a deal and then I'll buy the deal from them and they still make their 20 grand. Still, I make paid their, a guy 17,000 yesterday. Well, I signed the agreement to pay him 17000 yesterday when I was driving up. Um, and it's one of these things where it's like, you know, some people are going to get a little butt hurt about having to pay a $17,000 assignment. But at the end of the day, I'm still getting a really good Are you going to make money? Oh, absolutely. Um, and they made money and you're going to make it's money? That's what we like to call a win-win, oh, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, right. I, think, I think oftentimes we uh, are always so, one can become so competitive that they don't want to see their competition, air quotes here for anyone not watching, win. And the truth is we can all be winning together. And we I can. really think that's the mentality of our generation. Mm -hmm. David, you're 36. Mm -hmm. And Clint, you and I are 39 going on 30 years old. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I That's feel fair. like we're coming into this new era where people are actually willing to work together. And we literally are handing deals off to competitors because we're not. We're building that sphere, that network. I think a really great way to do it is through a local RIA. And if you don't have one, uh, start your own. There's a lot of ways to start investment groups. And I know a lot of wholesalers, wholesalers, flippers are very attracted to those types of organizations. Do you belong to anything like that? David? Oh man, I try to go to as many, as many real estate clubs, RIAs, meetups, um, as I possibly can. Now, obviously over the last year, guys, it's been a little bit more challenging with COVID. I, I totally get that. Um, but prior to COVID, um, I would make a goal to get out once a week at a minimum to a meetup, a RIA, and it doesn't always have to be a RIA, you know, it can just be any sort of thing. Like sometimes I'll just go get coffee with two or three guys that I know that are landlords in my market because they have things they can teach me, of course, but also those are my buyers, right? So, you know, I, again, I cannot stress enough the importance of marketing, I'm sorry, of networking, and that is really how you do it. You just get out and you find where these people are meeting and just go shake some hands, try to figure out what they want. And really that's kind of like the reverse wholesale game in a way, mm -hmm. right? Find the buyers, figure out what they're looking for. And then now you can specify or target your marketing efforts to find the people that yeah, are buying what I think, they want. I think that big piece of that, find what they want, offer value. So you show up to these events, you're networking. It's all about what you can do to help them. 
And soon enough, that comes full circle with um, a deal or something, uh, some sort of deal presents itself because you're out there offering value as you network. That's right. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Love it. For those that don't know this, this episode is being recorded in our studio. All three of us are physically in the studio together. Uh, this has been an awesome podcast. Obviously, we'd love to have more time, but David's got to hit the road. Uh, he came in today actually as a VIP guest speaker for our annual team building workshop and investor workshop. We host it two to three times a year. But I do want to invite anyone that found value in this interview and or is interested in building and scaling both an investment business as well as a team business. We are hosting our next in-person event in May. It's the Team Building Summit. You can go out to the teambuildingsummit.com to get more information or EliteRealEstateSystems.com. Click on events to see all of our upcoming events. But this team building event will be a lot more of what we talked about today. About 50% of the content is specific to investing. Clint will be a keynote there as well as real estate investor. Um, Robert Seifert Seif- and Gary Boomershine will be speaking as well. And we have a lot of great content there. So all the marketing strategies that David was sharing um, can be fulfilled and provided through Real Estate Investor. And so we'll get you guys put in contact with them as well. Uh, David, any final words? Is What's the best way for someone to get in touch with you if they have another 150 unit deal <laughs> to send right. your way? That's right. That's right. Um, honestly, I, I love Instagram. It's my favorite social media. Uh, check me out over on Instagram. It's David Allen Dodge, A-L-A-N, my middle name. Pretty easy to find me over there. Um, and I think just really the last parting words that I would say is, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Because really, if you think about the formula for success, it's failure plus failure plus failure plus failure equals success. It never happens without having some a bit of failure in there, guys. So don't look as at failure as you know the, how we define it. Like like I lost. Instead, look at it like I learned. And it's if part, you can part take, of the process, it's part of the process. And if you can if you can embrace that mindset, you are destined to be successful in anything you can do. I don't care if it's real estate investing, if it's, you know, whatever. If you can embrace that simple mindset, you, you will be successful, guaranteed. David Dodge, ladies and gentlemen. Words thank of you. wisdom. Thanks, David. Appreciate you being hey, here thanks today. Thanks for having us, Nice guys. job.